covered um, some of the groupings of the mental illnesses and um, you've guided us on how, what to look out for as a parent, as a friend, as a peer, a boss, an employee, colleague. So let's say I'm the one having the situation. I've observed certain symptoms align with what I'm feeling, what I'm going through. What is therapy? Because there's checkups. We go to a general practitioner, gynecologist, oncologist. But what is therapy? If for those who may not understand what therapy is, because I know there's physiotherapy, there's hydrotherapy, but what is therapy under mental health? So first of all, therapy is just a treatment plan. It's just a treatment that anyone receives when, once they go to a, an, a professional, yeah, uh, be it a medical doctor, be it a dentist, so they all administer, they go through a treatment plan, that, that is therapy. But in terms of uh, psychology, is what we call psychological therapy, yeah, so a psychological therapy involves a therapist and a client, and this client comes to therapy because of the negative experiences, emotional experiences that they may be feeling. So through that, uh, that relationship, um, but it can also be called talk therapy, yeah, psychological therapy or talk therapy, where a client comes to a psychologist or a therapist or a client or a psychiatrist to get the support that they need, yeah, yeah. So that's what uh, psychological therapy is all about, that relationship between um, the client and the therapist in terms of their emotional well-being and walking through that journey together. Okay, so then from the movies we've seen there's the guy or the lady with glasses always on a chair like this and there's that couch that the person sleeps on. So who is this person with the glasses? Is it a therapist? Is it a counseling psychologist? Or is it a psychiatrist? What? Who's who? So a clinical psych... Let me start by uh, explaining what a psychiatrist does. A psychiatrist uh, will give medication to a patient who has um, who has mental disorder, for example. And psychiatrists, most of the time, they handle extreme cases of um, of, of of various mental disorders. For example, someone who's highly suicidal, someone who has schizophrenia and experiencing hallucinations. Yeah, so that's the kind of person who will go to a psych psychiatrist so that they can get medical, um, or rather, um, what we call medication. So they're given, um, that's what you call psychopharmacology. It's, yeah. So or that's what a psychiatrist basically does, is most of the time to give medication to patients who have extreme or rather severe, uh, who are experiencing severe symptoms of various mental disorder. Yeah. A therapist, on the other hand, like me, I'm also a clinical psychologist or stroke, a, 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 a talk therapist. Okay. Uh, we work uh, with a, a client um, in terms of offering them support, um, using various treatment, plant, uh, treatment options, mm -hmm. for example, CBT or psychodynamic theory, very, very based on the various uh, theories that is out there. So uh, there's um, that we use in terms of helping a client walk through um, their symptoms in terms of lessening this, um, the severity of those symptoms. Mm -hmm. It's also good to note that um, <coughs> a, a talk therapist or a, a psychologist does not um, work with patients who have severe um, symptoms because it will not make sense. It will not help them because they're not in that right frame of mind uh, to work with a, with, a, with, a, with a therapist to understand what exactly is going on. So for a therapist, I mean, normal people do have psychological issues, you know, because we all experience stress in our lives at one point or the other, that we need support from a neutral party, mm -hmm. that we get to talk to a therapist or a psychologist, yeah. On the other hand, then a psychiatrist will handle those patients who are not, you know, in the right frame of mind to understand themselves, or who patients who have psychosis. Mm -hmm. So those are the ones who go to a psychiatrist to get medical help. 
because a psychologist most of the time does not administer medication. Okay. So I know there's been a lot of, I don't know if I should call it stigma because it's coming from the other end where we fear going to see one, not because we'll be judged, but because there's been stories about doctors who, let me say doctors in general, who administer or recommend medication for people who do not need it because of the financial benefits to the practitioner or being misdiagnosed or things like that. So in the first initial phase, um, I was asking the difference because I think in Kenya we are still trying to figure out or try to find our footing on like how when I was a kid you knew there was ENT mm -hmm. for ear, nose and throat and by then I wasn't too sure what a gynecologist was or an oncologist or whatever other definition. Over the years we've been able to know. So now when I'm starting out, because I've, I've gone for therapy mm -hmm. and I went based on recommendation. But then that was me. I had a situation where I was lucky enough to know someone who's gone through it and she was able to recommend it. She's a psychologist herself, so she also goes for therapy. Mm -hmm. But then what about the normal Kawaida Mwananchi? Where do they even find this information? How do they reach you or your fellow colleagues? Who do they know who they should see at that point? Do you, even if you see maybe your child probably has symptoms of um, the extreme disorders, do you just go straight to the psychiatrist or do you start a list with a the therapist then they refer you? How does that system work? Most of the time, um, you will go to a GP, okay. yeah? Um, a general practitioner. When, for example, you're experiencing um, headaches or you're experiencing certain symptoms, you go see a general practitioner, right? And for the lucky few, uh, these are the ones who will go uh, to a medical facility and get help. So then from there, then that medical practitioner or the general practitioner would be able to refer a patient for psychological support, yeah? Some are lucky, yeah, to get that line of treatment, where they're able to because they're able to explain their symptoms in a, uh, in a with clarity that they're able to get that psychological support. But lucky enough, and I think also the government is making efforts, and also all these NGOs are participating in offering um, psychological support to different individuals. There are clinics where people can go to. Uh, or a clinical officer who's um, who's actually one of the things that I was talking in a, in a previous discussion was giving um, pointers to say that we need more of uh, these clinical officers or people who are at the clinic level, you know, where they're at the grassroots level, where they are able to get uh, basic counseling skills in handling um, daily life challenges of different individuals. Because most of the time, there are very few extreme cases of people who actually need um, a therapist yeah if we are able to understand uh, these symptoms at a general population level uh, that or people very uh, very many people in the healthcare industry get to be trained on uh, basic counseling skills then they're able to offer support to the general population which I guess we are making strides towards that but we are not there yet you know I think it's an everyday effort that um, we, we make and also uh, partnerships with various institutions, be it the private sector, be it the public sector, or uh, generally also the NGO uh, contributing towards um, offering basic skills to um, individuals who are interested in the field so that they're able to support um, others in the field. So, okay. yeah. um, I have been through a cycle of therapy, as I mentioned, but technically it's actually been two <laughs> cycles. The first one was um, actually triggered by my gynecologist. Um, we were trying to investigate an issue I've been having for quite some time, and in the process, she said, I think maybe, why don't you see this psychiatrist? And at the time, I really didn't know the difference. I was like, okay, maybe it's probably just a, a therapist, mm -hmm. talk therapy. So I get there, we have a conversation, and then she refers me to a counselor. So at that point, I'm even more confused. I'm thinking, I was expecting actually at the time, and that's why I asked what's the distinction. At that moment, I was expecting, if you are a psychiatrist, I guess, shouldn't you be the one to help me? 
Um, so in the process, we, I was referred to the counselor. She suggested talk therapy, as you've said, which is a lot of talking for about five weeks, or rather one day each week for five weeks. But then I, I switched therapists or counselors, counselor therapists, because at some point I felt like my talking wasn't really helping me, to be very honest. I felt a disconnect between the, 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 the whole process. And I took a step back, I tried to reflect, see if I could figure out what was going on on my own, clearly I didn't do so well. I ended up going back again to a different one, which is where my friend recommended a psychologist. Uh, uh, yeah, actually, yes, a psychologist. And that whole experience for me was, see, the first was triggered by a, a professional, a general, generalish practitioner within a specific field, while this other one was more of my personal initiative to just get better. Um, so I've, I went there for a couple of months. I think actually she's one of, my, my therapist is one of those who keeps in touch, just occasionally says, hi, I'm not, I'm just saying hi, just to make sure you're okay, just make sure you still have my number, things like that. Uh, but I felt the experience was really good. I would encourage anyone, if you're feeling, like you had said, sometimes it doesn't need to be the extreme mood disorders. Just, I was going through a period of stress myself and I was, I, feel, I was feeling like I was losing touch with my life and things around me. I was very withdrawn. I am an introvert, contrary to popular belief. I am an introvert, but I was losing touch. I felt like I was really losing touch with just things I enjoyed doing, uh, people I like talking to, I don't want to see them anymore. I was very, okay, I'm naturally very isolated, but I became extra, extra isolated. And I can see how it helped, although I like to understand why, if that actually even happens, it was just me and maybe a preference. Does that actually happen in the medical field where you go through talk therapy and it doesn't work? And at that point, I chose to step back for a while, but eventually I did come back. But what happens when someone steps back and steps back and keeps stepping? How, do, how would you advise someone, me, if I was in that situation, how would you advise us to deal with that? You know, uh that's what we call therapeutic alliance. It's that relationship between a client and a therapist. Just like any other relationship, some relationships work, some relationships do not. And sometimes, as you're saying, there's because of that disconnect, that relationship does not work and that client is not getting the support, the right kind of support they, that they need. In that case, most of the time, it's prudent for the psychologist or the therapist to realize that there's a disconnect to say, you know what, I need to refer this client to someone else. That would have been the ideal situation, mm -hmm. yeah. But um, sometimes the, just the, the, you know, those are, even as a psychologist, those are the signs that you need to be looking out for. Because as a psychologist, you need to have a treatment plan. Mm -hmm. So when you go back to a treatment plan, when we discuss about treatment plan, when you meet a client for the first time, or uh, someone who's in need of emotional support for the first time, you start by taking <coughs> their history, yeah, so that you need you get to understand their background. <coughs> Excuse me, uh, their background in terms of their childhood history, their family history, their education level their drug history, their medical history. So those are the kind of in, that's the kind of information that will be relevant mm -hmm. in terms of offering the right kind of support. Mm -hmm. Then you go and ask and you get to discuss with your with your client the the presenting problems. What is it that is bringing you to therapy today? Mm -hmm. Why is it that you need this support? What are you currently experiencing? Mm -hmm. Based on that then you're able to work with your client in terms of setting goals or what you want to achieve in therapy. You as a client, explain to your therapist what are the things that you want to achieve, what are the things that you need to work on. Based on that, based on the objectives or the kind of objectives that you've set out with your client, then you're also able to define expectations. Yeah, What are your expectations out of therapy? Some people will say, um, I'm here to get better, but you need to refine that and explain what that needs to be. Is it measurable? Yeah. Um, in terms of duration, what are you looking at? So those are the kind, when you're looking at the treatment plan, you look at um, 
the presenting symptoms and taking their background history, um, defining uh, objectives and putting um, uh, measurements of, um, of expectations, measured expectations in place so that you're able to have a roadmap. Gen it doesn't have to be specific because every other week a patient comes to you or a client comes to a therapist, they're able to, uh, maybe something, an event happened, their father died, um, their mother, um, ha something happened to them, experienced uh, loss of certain uh, um, gravity. So, because those are the kind of um, issues that will come up in therapy, so you'll help your patients, uh, your clients to work with them in terms of finding the best way forward for them. So, in a treatment plan, I don't know the, if that happened to you, but that's basically the first few steps of, um, of therapy and how it needs to go so that you can work with your, with your client um, in terms of knowing what to expect are you working so that you know you're just not um, walking or rather just fumbling in the dark you're working on an actual plan and you're able to see the difference in what your client um, needs to achieve also on the other hand you as a, as a as a client when you come to therapy you expect certain kind of miracle you say hey, you know what this week you know, because of I saw my therapist, because the expectations are very high, you say, you know, my first therapy session, uh, because of that, I feel so good about myself, not realizing that the, whatever that you've been experiencing, the behavior that has been going on, or whatever that, is, that has been going on with you has been going, going on for a period of time, yeah? So it's not a one-day journey. It takes a certain period of time. For some people, a month, for some people, the two years, one year depends on uh, severi severity of the symptoms and also expectations of a client. So it's also unfair sometimes to expect uh, your therapist to perform miracles. Yeah, say, you know what, just because I've seen this therapist, I, I mean, I need to feel good about myself. Because also you need to have, uh, that's where we talk about expectations, yeah. Uh, what kind of expectations do you have in therapy? Are they realistic, really, to say that, you know, within the first session of seeing my therapist, uh, that I, sh I should be healed? You know, is it a, some kind of magic that happens? Because if that is not put in place, then you're not able to sustain uh, this highness of good feeling, yeah? Because you go in expecting help. Now that you've started receiving help, is it sustainable, the kind of help that you're getting based on your expectations? Yeah, so that could also be one of the challenges that could affect the relationship between a client and a, and a therapist. If the expectations, and just generally in terms of personality clash, uh, sometimes a client uh, does not seem to create a rapport with the, with the, with the therapist, so they stop attending therapy. Um. Personally, I went through depression and suicidal ideation mainly when I was young. I was between uh, 8 to 12 years old. And now when I bring it back to the current context, when we were trying to define who does what within the practitioners, in general practitioners, I know there's pediatricians for children and then there's the general. Within um, psychology, is there, like, have you guys segmented yourselves within those who handle children and those who handle adults, or it's just everyone handles everyone? So there's psychologists that are very uh, different. They all have their specialty with different fields. There's the organizational psychology that deals uh, that works with corporates, and then you have child psychology, which child psychologist who works uh, with children, and then there's the adult one. You know, dealing with the addiction specialist. There are certain uh, specialists for different things, yeah, depending on the mental disorder. For example, the others will say, I am <coughs> just a specialist to do with um, relationship issues or um, general stress, the everyday life. And then there's the other one who will say, I deal with personality disorders, and my specialty is specifically narcissistic personality disorder. So it's different for their different specialities and um, different specialists for all these um, mental disorders. They are not the same, they are all different.